All right, ladies, I'm back at it this morning. Um, I had a lot of response on this setup right here. It doesn't really matter which way it goes. So this was a little bit of a test sheet and I'm gonna do it for real on one of the layouts. So I've talked and I've decided that I'm going to do it as like a swimming pool or swimming layout or, you know, the little aqua tots slash goldfish swimming that happens. So I have some materials that I'm out here with. Now, when I did these, I started with white paper because I was just kind of practicing. I like it on the white paper, but um, we don't, I don't like to use just solid papers. Something with a slight pattern or a little bit of movement to it is um, much more interesting to me. And I think it takes a lot less embellishments when you have a background that has, you know, some pattern to it. So I have chosen this doodle bug, um, the petite prints here. I'm going to use this and I've got some of my materials out. My Tim Holtz ruler, which is super important, a good zig writer, and then I'm gonna be using template set 46. We're just gonna start the drawing today um, and then I'll come back on and I will do the gilding polish part with you guys. I'm going to assemble the whole layout together with you guys. Um, it's kind of something new that I've started and I've had a lot of people interested in knowing like how I put things together. So method to the madness. When I was thinking about this layout, I always want to start with a blueprint. Now I'm not going to do any of the pattern paper parts on this blueprint at all um, because I'm going to be doing more of the drawing. But I looked at this and I thought, hey, that's pretty good. It's got nice large pictures. Um, there's nine photos, which I'm gonna actually take one out. I'm gonna take this one out right here. And that's where I'm gonna do most of my drawing. I liked these lines down here because then I can do that with my marker and add some circles with the paint splattering or gilding polish, I mean. So I like to start with a layout and a plan. Um, anytime I'm scrapbooking, that is my first thing I do. And since I don't have photos for this, I'm just thinking about, okay, what kind of pictures would people have? I'm sure you've got verticals and horizontals for a pool party and pretty large pictures also. So I thought this layout was pretty good. Once I decided on that, let's put that aside, I pulled out some of the things that I need to start working on this layout. I'm gonna be using my Tim Holtz temp, uh, ruler. This ruler, I, I really love for this because when I go to draw the lines at the bottom, I can put the ruler like a half inch on the paper here and draw my line. And I know it's perfectly, perfectly straight. So all these quarter inch increments to me are a godsend. I absolutely love them. So that's how we'll be doing the lines. Anytime I go like this with the ruler, as long as I know I've got a flush bottom or top, I know that it is very straight. So it really works well for what I'm trying to do and I love it. Now the Tim Holtz templates, everybody knows I'm a little obsessed with these at the moment. Normally we're just using the gilding polish on top of them. And I'm gonna be using set 46, the circle layout. And I'm going to be um, drawing those circles on just with this template. So just another way to use your template. Now, when I was looking at this set, it does have three other templates that it comes with. And these are the other ones. And I thought, eh, maybe I should change this up to use the little fishy scales. But I don't need to be that redundant. So if somebody wants to use the fishy scales, you can. I like the circles and the bubbles um, for more movement. Because I am going to be putting fish on this page. All right, so let's get started. Let's start at the bottom. And I'm gonna put my ruler a half inch along the very edge of the paper so that I know I'm straight. And then I'm just going to draw. And I'm actually gonna make some space in here and not go all the way to the end. So that's my first line. I'm gonna do it on the other side too. And I'm just kind of randomly stopping it wherever I feel necessary or want to. So there's that. And now I want the lines to be about a quarter inch apart. I'm gonna flip this over just cause I think it's easier. And I'm putting my ruler, the black lines on the ruler for the quarter inch right on top of the lines that I just did. just drawing them. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. It'll be 
pretty repetitive right now. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna leave that and now I'm gonna turn it the other way, my ruler, and I'm gonna draw some more lines. Make sure this is flush so that I know it's straight. And I'm just gonna move them approximately a quarter inch and do a few. No real rhyme or reason to why I'm making certain lines in certain spots. Just what I feel like doing. All right, so I like that. I find that pretty interesting. And I know <clears throat> I'm gonna have a picture here that is three and three quarters um, tall, okay? Because it's two uh, landscape photos or uh, horizontals that are gonna go here and then one vertical here. So I've got quite a bit of space um, right here that I can use. If you're not sure like, you know, where to place your stuff, just grab a scrap piece of paper which I've got a white one sitting next to me, so I'll use that. Grab a trimmer. Oh, I gotta get a new chair, gee whiz. All right, so three and three quarters is the height of the back mat on our September sketch here, which is, I'm gonna put the pictures exactly like this, except for that one. So let me just cut this scrap piece of paper three and three quarters kind of set it there and I'll do another one too. That's three and three quarters for that vertical by five and three quarters so that we know exactly what kind of space we're dealing with. So it's going to be a lot like that. Pictures here, picture here, and then this is my spot for embellishing. So I have gone through, I've started my goldfish and I made a really cute, pretty large one and I'm gonna layer him together and I know he's gonna be you know, on this side as a focal and I've got some really cute chipboard pool words that'll work out. So with this, it gives me a good visual of what I can do on this side. So we're gonna grab my ruler again, get all the lines drawn and Let's see, let's not use these as a straight reference because that'll really get us pretty wonky there, I think. So I'm just using it here. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna start with my quarter inch lines. I'm gonna kind of hang heavy onto the left-hand side of the page here. Because we're taking that idea and we're turning it into something else. Who knows, it might actually embellish that blue one too just because it's so cute. All right. With that, I feel good about it. I like how it looks. Um, on this one, I did the large black lines or dots. I'm going to do that again because I do like that. I like how it gives the um, these lines some weight. But I'm going to do it after I put the circles on. So let's grab that Tim Holtz template. And we're going to just randomly draw some of the circles. Now I've been following the pattern that's on here. There's two that are kitty corner from each other. Do some of the small ones. I'm 
So I don't really have to pick up my template much because there's so many circles for me to choose from. But let's see how that looks. Oh, that's great. Okay. So then I'm just gonna move it along and do a few of the others and other spots. No right or wrong way here. It's just a matter of what I see and I'm excited about and want to draw. These are not perfect circles. I'm gonna turn the template over, there we go. Got a little messy there, but that's all right. All right, couple here, and then I'm done with the bottom. All right, I like that, it's great. So I'm gonna throw my template up here and start drawing some of them in this spot. And I hope everybody can see, I know I'm very heavy on one side. And I know everybody loves the videos, but they certainly they like freak me out. Um, I don't like hearing my own voice. So literally, I don't really listen to them once I make them. I just post it. <laughs> Probably not a great thing, but uh, I just don't like watching them. I guess I could do it with the volume off, but that probably wouldn't make much sense either. Now be pretty light-handed with this. The templates, you know, they are pretty delicate. You could, if you're pressing really heavy on the outer edges and stuff, you could definitely misshape in the plastic. Like I did there. Okay. But this is pretty good. I like it. It looks good. Um, I'm not gonna put any over here. That's it. So with that, I'm gonna take the other side of my marker and I'm gonna do some of the dotting that I talked about. Now, anywhere I've seen like a mistake on the line, I definitely, you know, like to do them there. Definitely a good idea to skip around and not just do it in one spot or like follow along this whole line because then they get normally very symmetrical, like you're doing the same thing all over. You don't even realize it until you pick up the pen. So skipping here, not thinking about it much is probably a pretty good idea too. Okay, let's see. So I'm at the ends. I don't know why, but I like it. Love it. So that's gonna be it for our template and our marker. And I'm gonna go grab the gilding polish that I want and I'll mix it up and I'll be back. All right, ladies, I got all my supplies, I'm back and I'm gonna mix up some of the gilding polish. I've got my palette out, a little bit of water, a palette knife, the Summer Sky Opal Polish, my fan brush for doing the droplets, and it's already wet, that's why it looks, um, oh see, I prefer it wet. So I'm gonna get that wet so that it has less little fingers. I like them all together. Like that. So I know a lot of people, you know, they buy expensive brushes. Don't do that for any of this. Cheaper the better. So let's open up that Summer Sky Opal Polish and mix up. Grab a little bit with your palette knife or whatever it is that's handy at the moment. Now this is a pretty big area, so a little bit of water at a time because you put too much and it's just too much. And then 
I know that's not enough water, but it helps me like mix up those big spots of the gilding polish, just kind of get them all mashed in there. And when I did this the first time, I mixed it up like this pretty solid and I painted some of the circles. So that's what we're gonna do. And then I went back and added more water and made it thinner to do the droplets. So that looks pretty good for right now. Let's set this stuff aside and we're going to color in some of our circles. I'm gonna start furthest away from me and I'm not trying to be perfect, which my oldest son is quite the critic. He's seen the very first one and he's like, looks kind of childish, mom, like you're coloring out of the lines. I was like, well, that's kind of the point, son. I wasn't trying to be precise, but he was not buying that. He just thought I was being messy. So that looks good. No need to do every single one, but you know, whichever ones you want. And if you want them darker, you can go back over them once they set up and kind of dry. And this is thinner paper. So it is gonna be slightly warped. You'll have to make sure you smush it between two heavy things. All right, that is good. Okay, I'll just keep going all day. I'll make more circles and color them in. No. So with that, let's go ahead and grab more water and get this mixed up for my splatter brush. Nice and thick, but enough so that it splats. Oh, there's Joe. Okay. We're going to set that brush aside. Pick up our color and then go ahead and do some splats. I'm going to move this just so you can kind of see it all. And that's great, ladies. That's exactly what I was looking for. And that's how I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to go do something else for a little while and let this dry. And as soon as it's dry, we will assemble the rest of the page. All right, ladies, we're going to put together the goldfish that are going to go on our layout. And I've got the pieces out here. I'm probably, I'm not sure exactly how many goldfish I'm going to use at the moment. I won't know until I get the layout put together and I'm waiting for it to dry. But I figured in the meantime, let's go through and put the pieces together. So you've got your large goldfish. I know for sure I'm only gonna do one of those. So I'm gonna put this little part on perfectly, not like that. Let's see here. All right, that's good. And I did go ahead and get some eyes because you know we're gonna put eyes on the little guy. And then this one can go on also. And there we go, that's good. Lots and lots of doodling on these. So we're gonna do that first before we do anything else. So we've got fins and let's go ahead and trace those. And then let's give them little lines. That curve with the fin. 
And then these are the smaller fins. Okay, outer ring. I'm gonna give him the little dots too that I like to do. All right, so we've got that. I'm actually gonna go in the inside of this ring too. And this is bringing us back to the 2019 Calendar Club where we did all of the characters. Excuse me. All right. Okay, now that I've got those on there, I'm going to use the other end. <clears throat> I have no idea what it is about these dots that bring things to life, but I do love them. Okay, now I got the little eyes. A lot of you guys have seen these eyes before. I'm gonna put these on. Um, we're gonna cut off all the eyelashes and things and you know make those ourselves. You wanna do the best job that you can. If you have a circle punch small enough, you can punch them out. But I just cut them. And then of course we're going to ink the edges of them because that makes a huge difference on your cutting. If you didn't do such a nice job cutting them, the ink lets it look a little bit more forgiving. So leave the top eyelid, but cut off the eyelashes. Okay. And then grab your finger dabber or whatever you're using at the moment and just ink them a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. So I think, I normally like to do a mouth and stuff before I do the eyes. So I'm gonna just set these over here. I'm gonna give them a little smile and a little turn down nose. And how about a little turn down nose for him? And then we can go ahead and add the eyes. All right, let me get something to help me pick them up. Put adhesive on them. Not pushing them down too hard yet because I want to make sure I've got them positioned properly. Around that nose. <laughs> All right, that's cute. Very, very cute. Of course, we'll go and we'll add glitter and some chalk to all this, but let's get both of them put together before we do that. So I've got two eyes here. I'm gonna put a little eye on him, but let's do the lines first. They're gonna be super similar. We're 
gonna do some little um, gills on this guy. So little tiny U's in somewhat of a pattern. That's great. Was wondering if I wanted to put them on him, but I don't think so. Oh, do you know what he is missing though? Like an eyebrow. Sometimes like giving them, oh, and the eyelashes. I totally forgot that too. All right, so let's take care of that now that I'm looking at him. So cute little expression eyelashes oh that's fun and I'm gonna use one eye for this guy this is super tiny but we can do it and I still have green on me from yesterday's project Okay, don't forget to ink. Adhesive. And then a little tiny eye. We'll use our Zig Writer to give it a little button nose and a tiny little half smile eyelashes <laughs> okay they're fun let's do our dotting on this one with the thin side first fat side all right I think that's good for now and we will let's go ahead and do our chalk we're gonna grab out a q-tip and you know, pick one of your oranges, orange or red. And we're gonna go over these lines. I'm gonna grab a little bit of red. I'm gonna put that red also on some of the edges just because it shows up better. And let's clean this up a little so we know what we're looking at. Okay, cheeks are a must. Uh, do I wanna try pink? Let's try the pink first. And if it doesn't look good, we'll go back to like a red. Yeah, it looks good. That's the pink. I like it. And then while I've got it here, just so you guys can see like how we would do the glitter glue. I have children that make too much noise. They're 22. And wait, no, 21 and 23. Sorry. I know. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> Trying to make you older. Yeah. If anybody is in need of uh, a 22-year-old and a 23-year-old, they're all yours. All right, make sure you glitter the green of the eye here. I'm using Sunburst, one of my faves. 
I like how it just makes everything so much brighter. Okay, let's set that sky aside to dry. I'm almost wondering if I want to give him an actual nose. So maybe the next time you see him, he might actually have a cute little button nose on there. But we'll see. I, I like him. He's super sweet. All right, orange again. Let's do those fins and the lines. A little bit of that face. A little bit of red now for that darker orange. Just gonna kind of do where his fin or his uh, little gills are. No, those gills are what would those be? Mm -hmm. Little cheeks, because everything cute needs a cheek. And then fluff it off with your cotton ball. Go back. The gilding pile or the glitter glue. We'll put one on each one of those. All right, let's let those dry and we'll start on our actual layout. Okay, ladies, I've got my layout dry. I've pulled out some of the products that I'm going to use to embellish this. I've got fish made and I have mats cut. So let's kind of assemble everything and then start putting the embellishments together. So when I was picking my mats for this layout, I um, decided to keep it pretty simple and just stick with the blues. Okay, that is a cat inside a cupboard somewhere. Oh my God, the animals and children around here are so bad. So anyways, your mats are all the same size and they are going to be three and three quarters by five and three quarters for the back mat, which is the navy. And the top mat is going to be three and a half by five and a half. And you'll need um, eight of them. Okay, so let's go ahead. I've inked them with vintage photo. I've glued them together and now I'm going to put them on my actual layout. Now, I always use much more adhesive than really I need. Um, and when I'm laying down my mats, a lot of times I like to work my way out. Oop, let's pay attention to what I'm doing here. This needs to go up. There we go. Like that. And I think I'm going to pop dot the next two. I like to pop dot. I got a pretty simple layout going on here. So when I do that, I like to pop dot some of the mats. So let's just grab a quick pop dots. And you give like a quarter inch gap. I'm gonna pop that this one also. Now, while I was actually waiting for this to dry, I, I thought it was dry actually, and I just brushed across it and that's when this happened. So I'm gonna have to cover that up now. I'm not exactly sure what I wanna do to cover that up, but it's going to happen. 
probably put the big fish there or some of the words, but we'll do a little bit of looking and designing. Oh, darn it, I want that pop dotted. This is my focal photo. So let's add just a smidge of adhesive and put that one down here. Okay, so pop dots here. Great. Okay, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and get some of our other pieces kind of laid out. I know I'm gonna add these two gems and I'm gonna add the pool rules. Um, I had these words designed specifically for another layout where the words were discontinued. So it'll be perfect here. Um, and it is Gypsy Soul. So I'm gonna grab out a new sheet to do this on because I do want to ink them. Now I did use that Summer, summer Sky built gilding polish and I could actually um, just use that to cover the words, but I don't want to. I want the words to be a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna use my vintage photo. Now these words are great. So, you know, I was, for Kristen who wanted the um, swimming lessons thing. I think these are great words, but I also think they're great words just for pool outside. They're kind of funny, pool rules, H2O, no peeing in the pool. There are certain things that, you know, Kristen won't use, you know, the sun she won't use, um, and certain things like that. Noodles probably not, but for you guys who are doing this for an actual pool layout, soaking up the sun will be very cute. So I'm gonna grab my vintage photo, distress stain. I still have mine. I keep the stopper and I fill it up with um, the vintage photo so that I can quickly do these words. If you gotta use your finger dabber, it's all right. I'd use that sometimes too when I'm not at home. I do not take these to the store. They stay at home. I have a tendency to misplace and lose things at the store. So I try not to take the valuable stuff like this there. Gypsy Soul does a really nice job designing our words. She's done our um, calendar club for the whole year and the words are fabulous and so is the gems that she's done. So I really appreciate everything she's done and I love the words. She's got a whole new set that she's designing for us. We're having quite a few different words made. Um, we're doing a birthday set. We're doing a um, Halloween set, a Christmas set, and we're doing more, but oh, there's a fall and just things that we, don't see a lot of and we always have those themes I asked her to design words for which she is and I really appreciate it now I'm definitely gonna um, do some glitter glue to these words. I might even grab like a new blue. I used yellow sunburst on the fish, uh, but I don't think I'll use that on these words because I'm trying to stick with an all blue simple theme. This is a pretty simple layout. Throw them up there so you guys can see. Oh, 
always like to cut away at the chunks. So there's no reason that you guys need to watch me do all of these. So I'm gonna stop the video and when we come back, I'll have them all cut out and ready to lay on our layout. I got my words all cut out. I'm ready to start placing everything and deciding where all of my embellishments are going to go. So um, I said I like to start with the big pieces and that's definitely probably our fish. And then technically that could be the words too, depending on how I put those. So here are all our little pieces. I'm definitely gonna pop out most of those. So let's just set them aside. If I was looking at the fish, it's gonna go one or two places. It's gonna go either right here or it's gonna go there to cover up my mistake when I brush my hand across it. Not exactly sure which, but I like them in both spots. It's not really, it's here nor there for me for that. I know I'm gonna have a little guy here, one on this side. And now we have some big like wording going on here, like no peeing in the pool. I think that's hysterical. And I definitely want to make sure those get put on and they're very easy to read. So just kind of deciding, do I want it here or there? And I think I am gonna move it this way. Slide him down. Whenever I have something where I'm making a whole sentence, I really like to keep it pretty close together so it's easy to read. And that looks good to me. Let's pop dot this guy because we know he's staying there. I'm gonna cut some with my scissors. Let me put that where you guys can see what I'm doing. Just putting the pop dots on. And then that cutie is gonna go right there. All right, pool rules. I think I can easily kind of put that right here. And every time I set something down, I'm making sure it looks good, it makes sense, it fills in a space that it needs to. Um, the always have fun, I think I will keep that in a full like little sentence. Maybe push it over by this fish here. Give it like an anchor with that. And then we've got some singles. We've got soak, water, play, wet, and H2O. I don't really feel like I need anything else here. I'm probably just gonna drop the words in this section here, just a matter of, you know, Pool rules, a push up. We'll put play, water, soak, wet. I think that's super cute. I think I'm gonna be done. I do have the word H2O. I hate leaving some things off, but it just doesn't feel to me that it needs it. <clears throat> Oh, what about if I put it behind the fish though? Mm, I don't know, I'm really covering up a lot of my design, which, you know, it's there as a backdrop. It's not to be the only thing seen. So yeah, I'm out of here with that. I don't feel it needs it. I'm gonna grab my sheet again and I'm gonna start gluing these on. These lines are pretty helpful to keep my wording straight, which is nice. Don't normally have that. Make sure you're using a good quality adhesive. I love this stuff. The pink adhesive is the best out there. Goes on easy, it's quick. I don't like to fight with my tools, so I'm always wanting to use whatever's easiest and fastest. Let's 
get our fish on. And I really wish I had some pictures for this layout. Kristen's kids are some of the cutest kids I've ever seen, but I don't have any pool pictures myself. Let's put pop dots on our fish. And then we're definitely gonna have that overlapping the picture. Make sure you don't glue that down if you don't have pictures on it, if you're designing the lip page or making it. Just leave those flapping in the wind and glue them down after you put a photo. I'm starting backwards to build my word just because I want it close to the fish. Okay, that's great. Let's get pop dots on this big guy. Oh, and I did put a nose on him too. I decided that, I don't know, he needed something, so I put the nose on him. I didn't do any white paint. I probably will, because that's one of my favorite things to do with the characters. But I don't normally put any glitter glue or anything on until I have the page 100% complete. Otherwise, you know, you gotta stop and wait for things to dry, and I don't really like that. I only did it for you guys for the video to kind of see how it was gonna be finished. All right, that's a lot of pop dots, Lord. So if you don't have a boo-boo like I do, mistake there that you made, um, you can definitely make sure you play around with your fish. You definitely might want him a little bit more like this. Not that it matters because I really don't think it does. Sometimes accidents are the best thing because it makes you rethink what you were going to do. All right, so we've got that on. Let's start with our pool. And there we go. All right, that's already pretty cute. It'll, it's gonna it's a great layout. <laughs> I really do love the fish, they're super sweet. Um, there is a lot of other words that I didn't use that you could switch it out for more of a pool layout, but it's not what I'm doing today. I'm gonna use the 49 and Market Blue Bubbles, and I'm just repeating on what we already see. And I'm also gonna use the Doodle Bug Blue Gems. I don't wanna bring another element of design into this. I just want to repeat what we're already seeing and that is the bubbles. So these are the biggest ones. So I might wanna start with those first and put them just in the spots. Oh yeah, that's super cute. Let's pick a few up here and there. Set them down. And this shouldn't be like brain surgery. You know, if you cover up some of the ones you've already done, it's a big deal. I do like some of the flats. So I'm gonna grab those with my scissors. Now, I know this is a dirty looking pair of scissors, but I like to use them for stuff like this.
because they're slightly sticky. So they, you know, they get underneath there and they pick things up like I need. I'm obsessed with these bubbles. I wished 49 and Market would come up with new colors of them. Like every color of the rainbow would just be perfection. But, you know, can't get everything I want. Okay. Cute. So there's that. Now I'm gonna go back with a few of the gems. If you have some leftover blue ones, that'll work great. I'm gonna tuck them in. Just popping these in with the other gems or bubbles that are already on there, mostly. Bringing in that another pop of color and shine. Okay, that bottom row, let's take a step back, look at it, looks good. Let's fill in here. Tomorrow is Friday. I think I'm gonna be working on October sketches tomorrow. Oh, I can't even believe I'm saying that out loud, but that's what's next on my agenda. I've actually been waiting for some fall stuff to come in. Otherwise, I probably would already be working on them. So see, I got that little boo-boo there and you know, I see it. So I'm gonna cover that bad boy up. That's one of the nice things about putting these small pieces on so you can cover up those little imperfections that you don't like that bug you. And that was one for me. All right, that's enough gems and it's super cute. I love it. I pulled out um, sea glass, which is a blue glitter, you know, blue on blue on blue. The only thing that's a different color here is the goldfish. So I've got that ready and I'm just gonna do, uh, these are pretty small, so I'm not gonna try to dot. Uh, I'm just gonna go on top of them and trace the letter. I will dot like some of the bubbles, just heavy on one side like that. I like to sometimes make them a little sparkly. As soon as we, yeah, it could be really crazy redundant here and do some dadding in there, but I don't feel it needs it. The layout, I'm always looking at the layout as does it look complete or does it look like it needs more? You know, once you have pictures on, does it look like, do you know it'll be finished kind of thing? Because pictures add a whole another element to the design. As long as I can look at something and say, you know what, yes, once a photo gets on there, it will definitely look finished, then I try to stop at that point.
perfect. I'm gonna do all the words, no peeing in the pool. I think that's hysterical. One of the reasons why I didn't cover these words with the blue gilding polish is because I was afraid it wouldn't show up very well. And it's such a big part of the design. And now looking at it, I know for sure they wouldn't have. This is pretty thin um, lettering. It's pretty delicate, which I like, but. Don't forget to do the bottom ones down here with some dots heavy only on one side. Look at me, I'm a little all over the place. But that's true to form for me. All right, ladies, there is our pool layout. Kristen, I hope you like it. And uh, it'll be available for sale in Shannon's specials.